Welcome to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast. For each week, we speak with brands, icons, innovators, and trailblazers within the fly fishing industry, exploring both the successes and failures they've encountered along the way to become who they are today. But first, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast or joined our email list, please do so by going to the Fly Fisher Insider Podcast.com, or you can also find us on Instagram at Fly Fisher Insider Podcast. Now let's begin. Welcome. Today, our guest is Damian Nure, the operating partner of C4 Outdoor hospitality management and consultant. Damien is an accomplished guide and well-respected within the industry. Damien's knowledge of fishing the saltwater flats of Belize is unmeasurable. Within, with his passion for this fishery, it's no wonder why he's well-respected within the industry amongst his peers. Damien is also the fishing manager for the Muyono Group. Damien, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. No problem. Yeah, welcome back. I know this is your second time on the show and uh, we, we talked the first time and what's going on? What have you been doing since then? You know, just kind of keeping my head down and uh, focused on getting more and more people booked down in Belize. Did take a quick little jaunt down to Mexico, down to one of my favorite permit fisheries in southern Mexico. Basically, it's right on the border of Mexico and Belize. It's a little village called Ishkalak. Okay. And spent a, a week down there fishing with some of my favorite guides in that area and a couple of new ones. And you know, it was fun. It was productive, beautiful weather. Yeah, I'm jonesing right now because I'm back here in Oregon and I'm <laughs> looking out the window and it is snowing. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I really wish I was Permit somewhere fishing. a little saltier at this moment. All right, Damien, you know what? For those that don't know you, can you tell us a little, can you tell us about yourself? Like let uh, let our listeners know about yourself. Yeah. So I've been uh, within the, the fly fishing industry for about 20 years now. First started off as a fishing guide here in Central Oregon based out of Bend, mostly focused on the the lower to shoots. Uh, did that for two seasons, then had an opportunity to acquire a business on the lower to shoots. You know, things just kind of snowballed from there, I ended up partnering and opening a fly shop and then eventually sold the, the portion of the fly shop, expanded the the fishing, just the, the outfitting company and bought some property near here and opened a hunting preserve and hunting lodge. And then eventually in 2016, uh, sold the whole thing and moved down to Belize with my wife and we managed Turnip Flats Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually made it for her career back to Bozeman. That's when I started uh, with my partner, Cameron. We started C4 Outdoor and since then, been working with numerous outfits, but mostly in the saltwater sphere and flats fishing. And right now, very much focused on the country of Belize um, with my clients. Awesome, Damien. You know, it's, it sounds like you're well-rounded and you've done everything and it's kind of like someone's dream life here. So I want to go back to the beginning. When did you start guiding full-time? How did you get into guiding? Where it all began? What influenced you? What made you want to go in that direction? Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so... I was in my early 20s. I had been working in the snowboarding industry for High Cascade Snowboard Camp and was a coach for them. And one of the, as a senior coach, all of us, we wanted to be part of the the adult program. Mm -hmm. So we would basically take uh, anybody over 18 snowboarding. And they were just these really cool week-long excursions. Yeah, we'd get to travel all over the place with these different groups and it was just a lot of fun. And as I started doing that, I I just, it was so much more rewarding than um, working with the kids um, just because you could have political conversations, conversations about other things other than just snowboarding. And at the same time, you know, I was very much into fly fishing and started hanging out with some fly fishing guides and started looking at the parallels and said, you know what, I enjoy teaching people to snowboard, I think I'd enjoy teaching people to to fly fish and ended up selling my snowmobile, bought a drift boat. And, you know, that's basically how it started. And the rest began there. That's cool. I did. I, do you still snowboard? No, man, I haven't been on a, I haven't been on snow. Well, a little bit of uh, classic cross country skiing, but otherwise I, yeah, my, my world and my life has totally changed. I 
despise snow. That's what was my next question was just going to be. It sounds like you despise snow for sure. When did you start focusing on salt water? Getting to that. So like, I, did you always were you always a freshwater guide, or did did you begin freshwater? Did you focus? Yeah, on yeah. So freshwater was definitely the bread and butter, and what you know paid the bills and put a roof over my head. But every winter. I would take at least one saltwater trip. You know, just kind of dabbled into it. Went to El Pescador down in Belize numerous times and just hadn't, you know, really enjoyed that fishery and enjoyed the challenge of sight casting to bonefish, permit, tarpon, barracudas, jacks, you know, basically anything that swims. Mm -hmm. And it's just because it's such a visual uh, experience, it just really attracted. And, you know, just over the last bunches of years. And I would say it's the addiction has progressed extremely quickly in the last, oh, say seven years where I'll do, you know, I probably spend at least 60 days a year down saltwater fishing, if not more. Crazy. Well, you know what, Damien, you mentioned like to pay the bills. When did you have that aha moment in your guiding career? Like when you're like, Hey, this is real. I, I'm making money. I'm fully booked. I'm, I'm, it's paying the bills. Like you said, I'm filling up. Like, what was that like for you? Walk us through that. Yeah. You know, so, you know, you can talk to a million different guides and I think they will all have a very similar response to this and that it is very difficult and taxing on the body to be out there, you know, day in, day out. And I remember my, it was my second or third year season. And I did like, uh, I don't know, 120 days. There was money in the bank account, you know, I had some savings saved up, but I remember thinking to myself, even in my early twenties, like, man, this is, I can't do this forever. I got to figure out how to continue to make this kind of cash, but do it in a, uh, you know, work smarter, yeah, exactly. harder. Work smarter, and, uh, not harder. Yeah. And so when the opportunity came up to buy a special recreation permit on the Lower to Shoots, basically a license to be able to guide on the Lower to Shoots, I jumped on it and borrowed some money and bought this business and um, had that permit for gosh, 15 years before I finally sold it. Now, was that attached to the fly shop as well that you owned? Uh, it was never a- attached to the fly okay. shop. No, the fly shop is still in existence today. It was when I started the hunting lodge and hunting preserve, the fly shop was just a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. So I, my partner and I, he bought my side out and I focused on just the hospitality uh, end of the spectrum and not the retail. And then you sold the guide. Did you sell the guiding business and then focus specifically on on Belize itself? Like, what made you like pick Belize out of all the countries? Yeah, yeah. So the hunting lodge and property we sold in. Let's see, it would have been late 2014. Winter of 15, yeah, I had a gap because I wasn't doing the bird hunting. Our bird hunting season was basically September through mm-hmm. March, and our fishing season was April through October. So I had a nice gap there of, you know, didn't have a whole lot to do. So got a uh, email from the guys down at Turnif Flats saying, hey, we're really busy this year. And if you know of anybody who would be a good fit and might be interested in helping us out, let me know. And I was just like, well, I'm not doing anything mm-hmm. this winter. I can do this. And yeah, so spent winter of 15. And then in 2016, after I sold the business, came back and then finished off the year and then sold the business. That's when my wife and I moved down to Belize and lived and worked at Turner. Crazy. Now you, yeah. you're working down there. You have your own business, which is partnered up with uh, the Muriono Group, right? Can you tell us a little Correct. bit about that and what your role is and and how that plays a part in the fishery down there? Yeah. So my partner, Cameron, and I, we started C4 Outdoor as a hospitality management consulting company. And we basically do, you know, we contract out to do just about everything from sales and reservations to marketing to cleaning of house, general management. You know, it's basically comes down to anything that a business needs within the fly fishing hospitality spectrum. We've got the skill set and the knowledge to be able to help make that happen. We had caught wind that the Muyono group was looking for a little bit more help in marketing and sales of mm-hmm. their fishing products. And so we started a contract with them in late, well, let's see, it would have been late 2017. And it's just evolved into what it is now. So I currently manage all the fishing products for Muyono. Muyono is a hospitality 
company that owns or operates 13 different businesses in Belize. Um, so we've got quite the, the um, bandwidth. It's not just about fly fishing. We do you know different types of fishing, mm-hmm. reef fishing, spin fishing, deep sea. But we also work with lots of families and corporate groups to be able to set up scuba diving, snorkeling, inland tours, kind of you name it, we can. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to chime in here because like, the lodges and i mean if you haven't if had, no one has taken a look at these lodges they're just spectacular like they're so beautiful which leads me to my next question and my next question would be like the destination of where these lodges are placed strategically in in belize is it is it like in a fishery that like is right there out out your doorstep or are you are you going to travel to this fishery like what makes this a top spot or destination for this fishery the answer okay. is both i represent two uh, locations Uh, Basically, everything is in southern Belize, and the two fisheries that we fish are going to be the Southwater Key Marine Reserve. If you're looking on a map, it's basically the zone between Dangriga and Placencia, Belize. Both of those areas are very popular for tourism. The Southwater Key Marine Reserve, in my opinion, is the best permit location anywhere in the Caribbean. Um, It's very consistent, even on tough weather days. You're you can see fish and you're almost guaranteed to see fish. The thing that I really like about it the most is that there is, in my travels, I've never experienced a better place to cast to tailing permit. I would say at least 90% of the shots that you would take at permit are going to be to a tailing permit and maybe a group. All right, Damien, you know what? I'm just going to go for it here. So I guess the elephant in the room is this, right? And the listeners are probably wondering, you're a permit expert in my opinion, of course. And and I know you're a per, you're passionate about permit and you're good at catching them. So can you explain to people how it is that you're, you're catching these fish, what your setup is, how do you catch them, how you go out and catch yeah. them? Just take it from a, a basic level and bring it right up to, to your level. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, permit, they're kind of a mystical fish and people really believe that they're very difficult to catch and they absolutely mm-hmm. 100% are until they until they are not. And I I know I'm digressing. I'll get back to setups and all of that stuff. But I I think it is important to talk about, you know, skills, though, and and accurate and being able to cast a long distance. All of those things are important in permit fishing. But honestly, I would take dumb luck over skills any day. I mean, I have stories of clients who, one of my favorites to illustrate the dumb luck part of it. uh, She and her husband are midday the boat is anchored they're with their guide they're having lunch and they're just kind of bsing and the guide's like oh hey here comes a permit and it looks like it's on this line to swim like right next to the boat the woman puts down her sandwich whittles out the the fly rod pulls off a little bit of line and the guy's like oh don't even bother it's already past you you know we'll see if it comes back around well she just flips it literally like maybe 10 or 20 feet of line blind casts yeah. it over her back and it lands like right in front of the fish and the fish scoops it up and eats it. that no, kind of thing no. has never happened to me i would love for it too i think it's a great story so getting back to uh setups gear wise nine and ten weight rods are my preferred choice always a floating line what i like to do is put a nice stiff piece of hard monofilament maybe three to four feet connect that to the fly line and then i would connect a tapered leader to that longer butt section the idea is that that longer butt section lengthens the leader a little bit, but I don't lose any okay. power for turning over the flies. So I retain, re, re, retain mm-hmm. my accuracy. The leader I'm going to use is typically going to be a, just a, a standard out of the box, out of the package, nine foot tapered leader down to in okay. the mid teens, yeah, yeah. you know, 14, 15, 16 pounds. There's a lot of, you know, I, would, I wouldn't say controversy, but there's a lot of opinion around what not to use. And I use both a, a non-slip mono loop and loop knot and then just a standard improved clinch knot. You know, it just kind of depends on what mood I'm in more than anything. Flies wise, each permit fishery has a little bit different feel and flies that are going to work the best. But if you're in a permit fishery that you're fishing crabs, typically uh, some of my favorite flies are going to be the Bowers flat crab 
and then the camo crab. A new one that's been come out recently is called the okay. contraband that's been very effective. The what is it, the El Flexo crab? I haven't I, used that. I yet, haven't even seen yeah, it. It's getting the a El lot Flexo. of hype. Yeah, that's the one. There's a uh, video that was done in the film tour this year. It's the the fly that the guys over in the Seychelles developed. Well, you know, I'm going to see if I can look that up and put it in the show notes. So, so Damon, you mentioned like being able to cast far. So, I mean, I'm sure there's people sitting there going, Hey, like how far do you have to cast? How far do you have to cast to a tailing permit? Like, can you walk us through like what, you know, as a guide, what your, your client's skill level is on that? Yeah. You know, the one really nice aspect of fishing to a tailing permit, two things. One, a tailing permit is a feeding permit and a feeding fish gives you a a greater opportunity of catching. When they're feeding like that, they get very focused. So oftentimes you can get pretty close to them. You know, from a casting distance standpoint, you know, the further you can cast, the better your opportunity. But you don't want to sacrifice accuracy. Um, Accuracy is by far the most important element of catching permit. When you're casting to a tailing permit, their focus is right down in front of them. So just to clarify, like they're looking down at the bottom. Down at the bottom if they're if their tails are up in the air. But if they're, you know, slowly moving, they are definitely looking focused down on the bottom, okay. but they're still kind of focused around them. But the the reason why you've got to, when they're feeding like that, you know, they just, their depth perception, they're really focused close mm-hmm. instead of looking long distance. So if you're casting... If you're afraid of spooking the fish and you don't cast close enough to it, they're never going to see your fly. The mentality of spook them or catch them is very important. I mean, put that thing right in front of their face. And if they spook, at least you know they saw the fly. Good, good, uh, definitely good knowledge there. So, you know, you did mention uh, equipment. And I wanted to ask you what, like, what's your setup specifically, like brand wise? Are you an ambassador for a specific brand that you're using? Yeah, you know, I don't, I haven't done any of the ambassador stuff. Yeah, maybe over the years, but I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. Like for me, a fly rod is a fly rod is a fly rod. I do really enjoy casting the Helios lines, the original Helios, the Helios two, the Helios threes now that are out. The Helios threes that are out are, I mean, I'm, I'm just very impressed by them. They're extremely lightweight in the hand and they will launch a line. They really like, they're fun to cast, smooth casting. So that's what I've been using of recent nine and 10 weight for permit has been the H2s. Does the lodge uh, offer the same line of um, products as well? You know, we do. We are both operations, both Copal Tree Lodge and Blue Horizon are Orvis endorsed. At both locations, we, we do have Orvis rods and reels. The exact models range. We don't have any H3s at this stage, but we do have H1s, H2s. We've got some recons. We've got some clear waters. You know, we've just, we've got a bunch of different models. You know what, Damien, I want to ask you, like, what made you want to shift into this role? Like, it sounds like you're so passionate about guiding. You're talking about these stories and it made me, made me like think to myself as I'm, as I'm talking to you here, you know, here's a guy he's telling all, you know, he's just so knowledgeable and talking about these stories about permit fishing. And now he's in the office promoting these lodges. Like what made you personally want to shift from being out on the water to, to here? I know you said work smarter, not harder earlier, but you're so passionate about it. So tell us, tell us what made you want to do that. Oh, that's a good question. Nobody's ever asked that before. You know, I would also, I, I really enjoy the sales side of, of this business and being able to talk to people and help dial them in and share my knowledge, my personal knowledge. It's taken me, poof, I don't know, 30, 40, I don't even know how many trips down to Belize to really not feel comfortable, but have it. It's not like I'm going to a foreign country anymore. You know, I'm yeah, going you're, to you're going home. my really? other neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. And so it, I really enjoy being able to talk to guests and make sure that they have the right gear set up understand what their needs are and what their expectations are, be able to match them up with the right guides. You know, I know the different personalities of the guides. I know the different types of fisheries in Belize. And, you know, if somebody calls me up and says, Hey, I want X, Y, or Z, there's a good chance I can say, okay, well, you want to go to this place. And maybe it's not even in Belize. Maybe it's the Bahamas. Maybe it's Mexico. You know, I have no problem making sure, send out a referral and make sure somebody who wants a specific cool. experience what gets it. challenges would you say you're facing in your new role as uh, the fishing manager for the Muriono? You know, probably our biggest challenge is definitely volume. You know, we're still trying to grow, 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 grow. And I've got really great guides 
that I've gotten them to work exclusively mm-hmm. for us at Blue Horizon and down at Copal Tree. Um, but you know that always puts a lot of pressure on me and and my team to make sure that we're keeping them working. So that's probably the the biggest challenge is just making sure and get in front of as many people as we can. Well, let's help you out here. Like, tell me about the guides. Are they local guides? Are they longtime fishers? Are, are you bringing them in from somewhere else? Are they friends of yours? Like, how, if I was to to go down there, what would my experience with one of the guides be like? It would be incredible. Both in both locations, the guide teams are over the top great. Mm-hmm. I'll start down south in Punta Gorda, Copal Tree. Copal Tree, we don't have any of our own employee guides. We contract with the Garber Brothers. And why that makes sense is because the Garber Brothers as a crew, their knowledge, their experience, their attitudes, they there is very few other groups of guides that are better than the Garber Brothers anywhere in Belize or maybe even the Caribbean or even North America. Their cornerstone is Scully Garbett. Scully's now been guiding oh into his early 20 years. You know, he'll do, I think wow. last year he did like 240 guide days. And when he's not fishing, when he's not guiding, he goes fishing. Yeah. I mean, the guy's yeah. just, that's where he wants to be, is out on the water. And he's very, he's got a very infectious personality. People really gravitate towards him. And that's why he gets, you know, 240 days. And then the rest of the team, no slouches by any means. They all bring their own aspects to it. Oliver, who's also Oliver Garbett, one of Scully's brothers, he's been doing it for nearly as long. He's very passionate. Alex Leonardo, who is not a blood relative, but grew up with all the brothers basically since they were, you know, four, five, six years old. So he's he's family. He's also extremely good and fun to be with on the boat. Yogi, Yogi is their cousin. Yogi is another dynamic personality that everybody loves. He's got a very gregarious uh, way about him and is also just knows the water. And then we've got Uncle Vic and Kenny. And both of those guys also, again, just fun to be with great knowledge. So great, great group of guides. As we Mm -hmm. go to the north, back to Blue Horizon, I mean, our leader, our head guide there is Lincoln Westby. And Lincoln is the pioneer of permit fishing in Belize. I mean, he's one of the first ones that saw permit fishing as a challenge and something that he wanted to master. And there's no doubt he has mastered it. The Bowers Flats Crab that is partially designed by him. It's one yeah, of the most yeah. famous flies for fishing for permit of all time. Who knows how many fish he has to hand personally or in his boat as with guests that he's taken fishing. He's 78 years old and still going. He'll probably do you know, close to 200 days this year on the water. And he has been very vocal to me that Damien, if you stop booking me, that's probably when. So Damien, it's safe to say he's a legend. He is a legend. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yes, hundred percent. He is a legend. And you know, when you fish with Lincoln, you quickly understand why he's a legend. I mean, his personality in the boat, he would never yell at you when he mm-hmm. gives you criticism or critique to help you get better. You know, it feels respectful and it's very helpful. Plus he's got a great laugh. His style of guiding is, I mean, it's really amazing. Like he'll literally drive up to a flat and he can scan across this flat and be like, the water's not right. They're not going to be here. And then you just keep moving. And I mean, I look at that flat and go, Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's seeing. I don't, I don't get it. You know, like I don't know what the little nuance is, but when you look at the same water and you know, you've been doing it for Gosh, I think he's close to 50 years. Um, you learn those little things, those little tricks. And then the rest of our guide team at Blue Horizon is also amazing. Steve Cabral is has been working with Lincoln for about 15 years. He's one of Lincoln's protégés. And then we have uh, Charlie Leslie and Marlon Leslie. Charlie is the original founder of Tarpon Key Lodge down in Belize. He sold that lodge in 2000. 15 or 16, he and I have been friends and, you know, fished together. And so when he found out that I was working over at Blue Horizon, he called me up and said, hey, man, I, I want to get back mm-hmm. on the water. Can I come work with you? And I said, heck, yeah, you can. And then his son, Marlon, he's a legend in the making, also a very infectious personality. 
uh, very gregarious, very fun to be around. If you get in Marlin's boat and you don't end the day laughing, I think it's more of a tell on yourself than on Marlin. Jokester? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Total jokester, but in a respectful and fun way and brilliant and very good at finding fish, catching fish. I mean, technically you call it a team for me looking at your situation. And I think our listeners looking at it as well. I think it's more of a family for you than a team. You know, absolutely. It's just, uh, you can see you're yeah, so passionate, so. right? Yeah. When you talk about that. So you did mention before, you know, about the lodge and growing the clientele and what, take me to where you would see the lodge five years, 10 years from now. What would your ideal put view be or, or, or dream be if you could have a, make that happen? Yeah. Well, we're blue horizon has been a large part of my focus in the last few months, mostly because down in Copal Tree, it's a very established brand, a very established lodge. It has a very long history within Belize, and there's a lot of people that return there every year. Blue Horizon has been a, a bigger focus mainly because you know we're just continuing trying to, to grow that business. One very exciting element is that we are working on mm -hmm. redeveloping Northeast Key. Northeast Key was Lincoln's, is Lincoln's island. He still owns the island, uh, but it's where he founded the original Blue Horizon Lodge. And so we're working on redeveloping that. So in the next five years, where do I see us? I see us camped out at Northeast Key. We've got guests basically all year long. And yeah, we're, we're just rocking and rolling and the guides are, are super happy. They're doing what they love. No, without a doubt, Damien. You know what? I want to ask you, where do you get your inspiration from to keep going within the industry and, and keep moving forward and show your passion towards it? That's also a good question. You know, it's a, it's a weird world we live in and in, in our industry right now, the whole Instagram, Insta famous, and, you know, just the, the mm -hmm. social media anglers basically is what you can say that, that aspect of the business, I would, it, it doesn't motivate me. I would say motivation comes from, I'm a pretty, from a business standpoint, pretty analytical. A lot of my day I pour over spreadsheets and budgets and, you know, forecasting and I can look at things and, you know, it's basically competing with myself. I would say that that's what motivates me is looking at, okay, what did we do in 2018? And what do we need to do to make, create growth? Uh, figure that out and then implement and start looking and analyzing and seeing if if we're we're making that happen. You know, one of the cool things that we did this year that I, I'm very excited about, we made it actually possible for a guest to book day trips online with Blue Horizon. So you get a lot of people that travel through Belize and that may not be down in Belize on a dedicated fishing trip or fishing vacation. You know, they might be down there with their family. So let me clarify this. So if I'm down there for a wedding and I'm like, hey, I'm in Belize. I don't know when I'm going to come back. I don't want to stay at the lodge because I'm staying at the Radisson, but I got a day off and everyone's hitting the beach. I want to go fishing. I can go on your website and literally book a trip. Yeah. You don't even have to talk to us if you don't want to. I mean, if you want to, we would love to, to talk to you, but you can get on. You can, yeah, look what's available and um, book it right then and there and pay for it all. I Once you book it, I get an email, I get a text mm -hmm. message. So there's no missing. And either myself or one of my teammates would email or call you right, right away and just confirm everything and get everything set up. Make sure you have what you need. So just to clarify that even further, I just need to show up with a t-shirt, a hat and shorts. Basically, yeah. Yeah. You know, sunscreen's a good idea. Sunglasses, but we have all the gear, you know, the guides have all the gear, you know, our day trips all include lots of water and sodas, a full lunch. Hey man, you know what? You just made it so easy for so many people by doing that. So many people that are down there for those destination weddings that are like, Hey, we got that day off or it's our, you know, the one more day before we fly out. Like why not? Why wouldn't someone take advantage of that for sure? hundred percent. You know, another thing that has become very popular, um, especially if, if you're down there for like a wedding or a group. We also have this deep sea boat we call the Weak Moment. It's been fully refurbished and remodeled. It has air conditioning in the galley, mm -hmm. you know, so you can, it, it's very civilized is basically what I'm getting to. We can hold 10 people on that. We can go deep sea fishing, bottom fishing. We can take people snorkeling. We can just do an island hopping tour. You know, this, it's this really 
cool boat that is a great group experience. But I did want to circle back to something. You mentioned about social media, and I want to ask you, like, I want to touch base on that because it's something that I, I'm inter- always interested in when I talk to people about is how it's affected them as a brand, as a fly fisher, whether it's affected you positively or negatively, or if, if it's affected you at all. Like, where do you stand on that topic? It's a very effective tool in marketing. I think it's an extremely effective tool. You know, the when we step outside of just the specific fly fishing industry or hospitality industry, you know... The, I'm just baffled by the whole influencer deal and how Mm -hmm. there's literally like power given to people because they have X amount of followers on their social media, whatever their, whichever avenue they, is their preferred social media outlet. And I, you know, it's, it's something that we employ. I mean, we, we bring influencers down to Belize because we see the power of it. I just continue to be a little baffled by it. As far as has it been a good thing or a bad thing for us, I, I don't think I could ever say it's been a negative thing by any means. I mean, the online reviews, you know, the the one thing from time to time, this doesn't happen very often, but occasionally we'll get a guest that, and this is, I mean, this happened back in my days here in Oregon, you know, maybe the the weather conditions weren't just ideal and I would hear about it afterwards and a guest would demand a refund. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of those ones, well, you went on the trip. It's hard for us to justify the refund. We still have expenses to pay. You know, it's I've had times where guests Crazy, basically eh? threaten to write a negative review. So that's what I would say is the only negative to the social social media these days is, you know, just the power. It's funny because when you say like you're flying someone down to the lodge or, or some lodge flies someone down that's an influencer. I always look at it like, what's your rate of return on that? Three pictures or three posts? Do you know? It's it's a lot. Like you, you like how does how do you find that like you justify your rate of return on, on what you're providing for that influencer? Right. And, you know, it's always confusing for me. So is that something that you're experiencing? I know you're in the marketing department. So is that something that you experience? Like, are you set up ahead of time? Like, here's what I needed as a rate of return. You know, the rate of return is extremely difficult to track. You know, the, the, you know, you can, you can track it through views, basically how many times has that post been viewed? You know, you can track it through new engagement where, you know, maybe there's more people that have now seen Mm -hmm. your brand and they're going to start following you through whatever social channel. As far as return on investment, I mean, when we bring an influencer down, you know, one of our main goals is to boost followers. And, you know, so that later on down the line, you know, we just have more yeah, fair eyeballs enough. Yeah, to yeah. be checking out what we're, what we're all about, Yeah, you know? And so it's, it's also, you know, it's a, it's pretty nebulous, you know, a good influencer is not just, and the ones that we like working with, you know, they're not going to be just isolated to have a podcast, you know, one of the social channels, they might, <laughs> just, I'm bugging you, I'm talking. have a podcast. There you go. I, I get the hint, <laughs> you know, they might have a group of anglers. And maybe, you know, after they visit, they talk to that group of anglers and they bring the, yeah. the group back. You know, that's that's a big win for us. 100%. It's, that's your rate of return. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's where it's like, hey, it paid off. As opposed to, hey, I, I click your, your picture, it gives you a heart and that's all you get out of it, right? So that's where I'm trying to go with it. You know what? Any right. last words right. before right. I jump to our frequently asked questions um, from our listeners here? So do you have any last words for our listeners? Uh, you know, I would just say... If you are interested in fishing for permit, definitely consider Southern Belize. Awesome. Damien, I also, you know, I almost let you go without asking you this. And uh, I just, I just realized, so I, I know the listeners would be disappointed. What's one thing you would change within the fly fishing industry? Yeah. Um, one thing that I would change in the fly fishing industry, <laughs> I would make it bigger. I would, I would, I would make it a bigger industry. That's the one thing I would change. Damien, do you have anything for our listeners today? Yeah, I would love to extend a 20% discount to all fishing packages at Copal Tree Lodge or with Blue Horizon down in Belize. Best way to reach us is going to be uh, fishing at copaltreelodge.com for anything related to, obviously, Copal Tree. 
and then info at Blue Horizon Blues. And Damien, where can we find you personally? I, Me personally, you can hit me up at Damien, D-A-M-I-E-N, at C, the number four, outdoor.com. Damien, once again, thank you for being on our show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been great. You got me all jazzed talking about permit fishing. Please. <laughs>